I'm so loving this scarf. It has great texture and an awesome puffy pom-pom at the end. This is the waffle stitch pom-pom scarf. I hope you guys are ready to start. Hey, it's Denise from Lumahat.com and we want to thank Promise Learning for covering the cost of closed captioning and please remember to watch the video completely before you start the project. See the description for a list of supplies. You're going to start by securing the working yarn to the anchor peg with a simple knot. You can do a slip knot if you want to. Then take the working yarn behind the first peg and come back to the front, wrap in front of that one, behind the next one, in front of that one, behind the next one, and you're going to zigzag your working yarn. So it's in and out, in and out, until you've reached 18 pegs. And then you're going to turn around because we're going to be knitting flat. So take that yarn and you're going to cross over and come to the peg next to it and then you're gonna lay your working yarn flat over a few pegs. Bring down your loops so you can lay that yarn flat over it and hold on to it with your fingers, get your hook and you're going to knit off every peg that has two loops. So after you do a few of them, you take your yarn and cover a few more. And again, you're knitting off. See that loop right there? You're going to knit off every peg that has two loops. And as you can tell, it's every other peg. You're going to keep doing this till you get to that first loop, which by the way, the first peg, I mean, that first peg does not have two loops. It only has one. And you're going to turn around and bring that uh, yarn forward and lay it over the peg that has a loop on it. And now we're going to do a U-wrap knit stitch. So you're going to half wrap your peg and knit off and continue all the way to get to that 18th peg because you're doing one row of the U-wrap knit stitch. Now that last peg looks a little funky as you can see here. Just bring the yarn and cross it over and knit off. And now your cast on is done and we're ready for the first row. In this case, rows one through four are exactly the same. So you're gonna slip one, purl one, and then you're going to knit four, purl one until the last peg and that stitch you will knit. All right, let's do it. We're going to skip that first peg, go here to purl. So we're turning around because we're knitting flat and the yarn is under the loop, we're going to scoop up the working yarn and create a new loop. And then take the loop that's on the peg, off the peg, and the new loop that we just created, we're gonna put it on the peg and pull the yarn to tighten that loop. And then we're going to knit. So we're going to knit four pegs this is the pattern that we're going to follow. So here's peg two, three, and then we're gonna do one more knit stitch. We're using the U-wrap version of the knit stitch and knit off, that was knit number four, and now we're going to purl. And remember, this is the stitch pattern that we're gonna continue to do. So we're gonna knit four and purl one until we reach the very last peg. So keep going, knitting four and doing one purl after those four knits. Don't forget, you're gonna knit that last pair. 
peg. Now repeat the pattern. Slip one right here, purl one, and then you're going to knit four, purl one. So you get to the last peg, which you will knit off. Now for row 5, we're going to slip one, purl 16, and knit the last peg. Hey, and don't forget to remove that knot from the anchor peg after a few rows. Remember to knit that last stitch for row five, and when you're finished with that stitch, you just start over again. Purl, knit four, purl, knit four, purl, knit four, knit at the end. You're repeating rows 1 through 5 until you get the desired length. I wanted 6 feet, so I did 490 rows. In between, I did need some yarn, and this is what I did. I just took the two skeins, the tips, and I did a basic knot. Nothing major. Once I tie my basic knot, I pull to make sure that it's really, really secure. And then I did a second knot. This is very important. You don't want this to get loose in the wash. And then I didn't want to see it, so I cut my little ends with a nice sharp scissor. And I make sure I have no fuzzies, because I hate to see those little fuzzies in between. And I pull on it to make sure it's secure, and then I continue my pattern. Now the last four rows are going to be your same four rows that you started with. So you're going to slip one, purl one, and then do the stitch pattern of the knit four, purl one until the last stitch, which you're going to knit. And then this is what you'll have when you are there. Isn't this beautiful? All right, so guess what's next? It's your last row. You're going to slip one and knit 23. Woohoo! Knit that last row with joy. And here we go. Wow, like, I don't know why this music reminds me of church. Now it's time to bind off. Now take the working yarn and wrap it around the loom completely. Get your scissors and cut the working yarn. And then you're going to take your hook and move that first loop over to the one next to it. Tighten that and knit off. You're going to do the same thing with the last one. You're going to move that last loop from the peg over to the next one and knit off. Now you're going to take that working yarn and you're going to feed it through every one of the loops. So from the bottom you pull up and feed the string completely. Make sure that you get all 16 loops, which is what you should have left after um, decreasing on both ends. You have 16 loops and you're going to feed your working yarn through all of them. When you're done with the hook, you can remove the loops from your loom. Now I'm going to give you a heads up that it's going to look really weird at the end. In fact, it looks wider than the rest of it. Don't worry about it. It even looks wider than your first one. We're going to fix that. For now, you're going to focus on stretching those stitches and make sure you stretch long ways and the width as well. So you're stretching both ways. All right, and then you're going to take that working yarn the that you finished with and you're going to pull on it and this is going to gather all of those stitches into a tip. You're going to do the same thing on the other side because you want that end to come together and just look like a point. At the end of this point is where you're going to connect your pom-pom. So you want it nice and gathered. So just pull it as tight as you can. 
It's time to add the pom-pom. I made mine using the clover and I will give you a link to that awful video in my description and some sharp scissors. So um, here's the second one and you have to find where you tied the pom-pom. I put a needle on the end of my working yarn so that I could bring it back to the other end and finish closing off that tip. So I pull on it and now with that same blunt needle, I'm going to the um, yarn that I made the knot for my pom-pom and I'm going to feed it through that little hole that is created from you doing the uh, gathered bind off. And uh, I'm gonna secure it by coming back on the other end and I am going to tie the working yarn from the scarf with the working yarn from the pom-pom and um, this is my way of doing it however it works for you to get this pom-pom attached to the scarf you use that method and I want to secure it a little bit more so I got my crochet hook and I feed my other um, string from the pom-pom and I make a knot with the string from the pump from the scarf as well and there you have it you're basically done now just cut off the excess yarn if you like the video like it share it comment and if you don't well there's always next time